Hello and welcome back to my channel. Now you may be thinking, Amelia, why are you standing next to an old Saab? Now this is no ordinary old Saab and I do love a Saab anyway. This is actually a 9.3 Viggin and it's quite rare. Now this is my sister's car and she's going to be selling it soon for various reasons that I'll get onto later. But I thought I'd get a video with it and show you guys before it left the family. Now, what is the Viggin? That is the question. Now, the Viggin was Saab's first attempt at performance cars. They were up against things like the M3 and the AMGs of the time. Now, sadly, obviously, it didn't compete with it. However, they created a really, really good fun performance car, especially for the time. And I'll talk to you about the statistics in a minute because they're quite impressive for a car of this age. Now, why Viggin? As most of you will know, Saab is very, very aircraft orientated. So in Swedish, this is actually translated to Thunderbolt. However, that's not what it's referring to. It's actually referring to the Saab 37 Viggen fighter jet. And you can definitely see some notes to the fighter jet history and the aircraft history in this car. And that is what I love about Saab and I'm sure a lot of you do too. So let's have a look around it and see how it differs from a normal 9.3. And again, of course, go for a drive because this thing can drive well. All Viggins wore redesigned front and rear bumpers and also side skirts. It had a rear Declan spoiler, which was very sporty, and sports leather seats, which are super comfortable. And I'll show you guys later. It also came with 17 inch wheels and upgraded brakes. With the yellow construction site style triangular Viggen logo glued on the side. We also have Viggen written inside and the logo on the seats. So how does this differ to the normal turbocharged 9.3? Right, so it has a performance tuned ECU, a higher capacity intercooler, a higher flowing exhaust system, a performance clutch and pressure plate. It also has stiffened and lowered suspension components, as well as reinforced CV joints and drive shafts. It's had a lot of upgrades. So we've established that there are quite a few differences from the standard Saab 9.3 and this. Obviously, this is a 2.3 litre turbo and it was one of the lighter engines that they created. Now let's talk statistics because of all those mods, what's the actual statistics? So this is 1999 models, which means you get five horsepower less than the later production models. So you get 225 brake horsepower in this and the later you get 230. Now you get 251 foot pound of torque, which isn't bad. All that combined, everything added up, gives you a 0 to 60 time in 6.5 seconds which is quite impressive for a car of this age. Now, I think you guys have seen it enough with the roof up. It is a convertible after all. So I haven't actually done this before, but let's see what it looks like with the roof down. Okay, but how cool does it look with the roof down? It's super cool. Now, if you don't know, I have an E46 330Ci that I've done a video on as well. And it's so funny because my sister and I both have sort of 2000 black convertibles. And I always think that the E46 looks better. However, getting to know this, I understand it. Like even doing this video, it's so quirky, it's so cool. And I think I'll show you the interior now because it's one of my favorite parts. It's literally like sitting on an armchair. So interior wise, we have the Viggen logo imprinted on the seats, which is really, really nice. It's a really nice place to be in here. I've said it before, but these are so comfortable. They are literally like being in an armchair. Now, when I first got on this, and especially when the roof is up, it feels really weird. And I think it's because when I drive the E46, everything's quite like low down. Whereas here, everything is very in your face. Um, but everything works. It's, all, it's got aircon that works. The roof obviously works. It's just super cool. And when you turn the car on, I keep going for here. The car doesn't turn on here. The car actually turns on down here. Now, if you know Saabs, you'll know that that is the case and it did confuse me for a while, but you definitely get used to it. So it says fasten your seatbelts with a really cool sign. And that is very cool. It's got a nice hum to it as well. I really like the interior and I think it's in fantastic condition for the age of the car. 
Um, I don't know how the back would be actually. I think I should give it a go. Right. I'm five foot nine, so I'm, I don't have high hopes for fitting in this. I'll have to push the seat quite far forward. Imagine kids in here though, they'd be so comfortable. <laughs> okay, that's not too bad actually. Oh, these seats, I tell you, why don't they make seats like this nowadays? Why are they so comfortable? I can fall asleep here. You go finish the video, bye. <laughs> no, I'm joking. We haven't gone for a drive yet. So you may have noticed the Abbott Racing sticker. Now, what does that mean? And it's quite significant in the Vigan's history. So when these were created, chassis development was something that was quite overlooked. Now, Abbott Racing came up with a kit to try and fix this. They added all the things above, and this car has all of them. Now, a journalist tried this car with and without this kit, and thereafter, this kit was named the Vigan Rescue Kit. I think that speaks numbers. So if you are buying one of these, you want to look out and see if it's got one of these kits. Bloody hell. <laughs> That's quicker than I thought it would be. <laughs> oh, how much fun. Oh, that was going all over the place. <laughs> Do you know what? So I haven't driven a manual in a while actually. Um, and it's weird how everything's positioned. It's so a bit weird because the gearbox is so low down. I'm used to it being a bit higher up, but then the steering wheel is very much like in your face. So I've had to pull my seat quite far forward so I can reach the gear knob, um, which isn't a bad thing. I feel like I'm very upright. Um, I feel quite comfortable. Like oh, I feel very comfortable. Go down to second. God, do you know what? It all, almost gives me sort of like GTI vibes. Um, it's got that sort of instant throttle response that my BMW 330 automatic doesn't have, probably because it's automatic. But this is good fun. And it sounds good. I feel like this would be the perfect car for someone to buy and sort of keep because this is going to be a classic soon and there's literally like only a few of them for sale at the moment. You don't see them. I never knew they existed. Um, which is why it's such a shame she's going to sell it. But it is what it is, um, unfortunately. And I hope it goes to a good home soon. But not too soon because I'm enjoying it right now. <laughs> So they actually said at the time this sort of competed with the BMW M3. I can't imagine what it'd be without the kit from Abbott Racing because it's it's good fun, but you can feel like it is sort of pulling you. And obviously this has no traction control, so I wouldn't want to put my foot down in the wet. Um, really, I don't think that would be great. <laughs> it is a shame they didn't do these in automatic, but I guess if you wanted an automatic or something chilled, you'd just go for a normal 9.3, wouldn't you? Um, which my dad actually has. So I could do a video on one of them. I feel like it might be quite nice to actually compare them both. Oh, I am on reserve fuel. I don't want to be breaking down in my sister's car. I don't, you know, she doesn't even know I'm doing this video right now. <laughs> She's gonna watch it and be like, why did you take my car out? Sorry, you're at work. <laughs> I do feel like a Saab is a bit like Marmite. You either love it or you hate it. They're quirky, they're different. They're comfortable as anything. And it's such a shame they don't make them as cars anymore. It's such a shame. You don't get cars like this nowadays. There's so much character in this. A vegan. I'm never gonna get over that word. I just love it. I love this car. I think this is a fantastic car. Would you daily it? Because I don't know if I would, but then I'm actually quite, I'm just chilling right now. I'm just like la 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 chilling but then if you want to go you can go i wonder what it'd be like if you actually uh, made this a bit faster as well i think it'd be crazy without traction control it'd be a beast so there we have it you made it to the end of the video so my final thoughts on the vegan are this is a cool car this is a very cool car like you can't deny it this is quite iconic and i know some people will be like it's a bit fugly 
but I think that's kind of cool. Saab have such a history and the fact that this was their first performance model is very cool. And although it didn't line up with the greats like the M3, I think it stands in a league in its own. And I think that if you know, you know with this car and it will be an awesome thing to own. And it's definitely going to be coming a classic very soon. So on to the reason why my sister is selling it. Um, so she's a couple of years younger than me. She basically can't afford the running cost because the Mars Paganin is very bad. And she wants something a bit more practical with the dogs so she can get the dogs in the car because she can't at the moment with this. And I just think it's time for her to say goodbye to it, which is such a shame. But if any of you guys are interested in this car, then message me on Instagram at Amelia Automotive and let me know. Because I would like it to go to someone, well, she would as well, that is that understands it and is passionate about it and will look after it because it's such a great car in such great condition and it has been looked after. I mean, the only thing that really needs doing is, is the, the wheels need refurbishing. So it's not much. It's just had a lot of work done to it as well, which if you message me, I can let you know what it's had done. Um, but yeah, thank you. And make sure to like, comment and subscribe. And if you like the older car videos, let me know because I do love doing these and there are a lot of different other cars I could do videos on these, especially a Volvo, an old Volvo, which I could do a video on quite soon. So that'd be quite fun. Anyway, thank you and goodbye.